The wildest places on our planet have always been home to powerful leaders. But now, a new hero is rising. Guess who is the martyr? Smart. Resilient. And female. We don't call her Mother Nature for nothing. All hail the Queen. The Congo, Central Africa. Over a million square miles of ancient rainforest. Home to a secret society where survival depends on friendship. To find her place in this world, a young female will leave her family and everything she knows. This forest is home to an animal we know very little about. This is Zoe, and she is a bonobo. If Zoe and her family look a little human, it's because they very nearly are. Along with the other great ape species, we share nearly 99% of our DNA with them. But the noble society is unique. It's the only one where the females lead. Zoe lives in a large group, more than 50 bonobos. And this is the boss, Tala, the alpha female. She's also Zoe's mom. Thanks to Tala, Zoe holds one of the highest ranks. She's the very center of attention. For Zoe, life is good. Really good. The forest provides for everyone. Leaving time for fun. Bonobos are the most playful of all the apes. And with babies born year-round, there's plenty of partners in crime.
Bonobos take a long time to mature to adulthood. But after nine years of play, Zoe's changing. Soon, she'll be ready to have a family of her own. In bonobo groups, boys stay with their mothers for life. But Zoe must leave home to find a mate. She'll have no choice but to walk away from all of this. But right now, Zoe's being groomed for the third time today. When she hears something, calls ring across the forest. Within moments, they are all on alert. Another bonobo group approaches from the east. Zoe's family rush to confront them. The males from both sides meet head to head. Zoe watches them display in the canopy. They're defending their female. The intruders drag branches through the forest in a show of strength. The males from Zoe's group do the same. But in all the chaos, the females have barely moved. Tala, the Alpha, she's unfazed. The boys can show off all they like. Their aggression is a waste of time. The girls have a very different take on conflict resolution. Females from each side Embrace. Shake. If you got my bag, I got you. Set your worry free. You got to shake. Shake. You got to shake. This unique shake. greeting got to shake. triggers a powerful biological response that dispels tension in an instant. <laughs> These meetups are a chance to share information from the forest.
the two alpha females reaffirm their decades-old friendship, strengthening the bond between the groups. Bonobos are the most peaceful of all the apes. As the males watch from the canopy, one catches Zoe's eye. This guy has her full attention. The party's over. The other group and the male leave. Now, Zoe has a choice. Stay with her mother and everything she knows. Or follow for the chance to have her own family. Tala watches her daughter. As Zoe makes the decision that every female must make. She steps into the forest alone. Zoe follows the others. She's in their territory now. This part of the forest is new to Zoe. Alone, she's vulnerable. Leopards prowl the forest floor. Zoe needs the safety of the group, but these are 30 unfamiliar faces. Ain't no joy but to be brave. Bonobos won't turn a stranger away. Still, Zoe is going to have to work hard to fit in. First, she needs to figure out who's who. The male that Zoe followed is here. She's got good taste. Camillo is in his prime. But he's not the boss around here. She Martha, Camillo's mother, the Alpha and at 40, 
the oldest and wisest female. She's the one Zoe needs to impress. Martha knows every tree in her territory. She climbs 160 feet up into the canopy. To branches full of fruit. With her family, Zoe could take what she wanted. Now she hangs back, unsure. Another young bonobo begs for Martha. There's plenty of fruit to go around. But coming from the leader, it's more than just food. It means you've been accepted. Zoe's hungry. And the fruit looks delicious. Hair to the sky, so much cool and I spread, I sure you have. She moves closer. I sure you have. But now Zoe's at the top of the tree. All eyes are on her. The males react with excitement. And Zoe finds herself surrounded. It's all too much. Down on the forest floor, Zoe is safe from unwanted attention. But she's still hungry. She digs in the dirt for truffles, a skill she learned from her mother. Zoe knows how to fend for herself. But bonobos need more than food to survive. Like us, they thrive on physical closeness, touch, affection. Zoe's no different. It's been a long day. The bonobos can't spend the night here. With darkness comes predators. Zoe watches as Martha climbs up. And the group follows into the safety of the canopy. Each bonobo makes their own bed of twigs and leaves. Martha takes her spot high in the tree. 
her rank reflected in her position. As the rest take their places around their leader, Zoe stays behind. As darkness falls, Zoe makes a bed away from the others. Having slept with her mother for nine years, tonight she sleeps alone. The Congo forest is so vast, it creates its own weather. Some of the most intense storms on Earth and they're becoming more extreme. After the lightning comes the rain. Bonobos are used to this weather. That doesn't mean they like it very much. Zoe's face the storm, hungry and alone. But as the rains pass, the group comes together to find food. Zoe needs to make today count. The muddy floor reveals plant roots. There's food all over the forest. No need to compete. Another reason that bonobos are so peaceful. leaving young ones to discover the forest at their own pace.
But their world is now a dangerous one. A mom and her baby play with a strange contraption. A snare set by poachers. Neither she nor Zoe have seen one before. But not everyone here is so lucky. This young male has snare wire wrapped around his palm. Soon, he'll lose his hand. And his own mother's hand bears the same scars. With such serious injuries, they both could have died. But bonobos show great empathy. If one is injured, it will be cared for. Having friends is everything. Zoe can't afford to wait a moment longer to make one. And she sees a way in. A baby invites her to play. But Zoe's more interested in its mom. who looks like she could do with some help. Susie is a high-ranking female, a valuable ally. So, Zoe approaches. Grooming is a way to build bonds. Zoe's more used to being groomed, but she makes the first tentative touches of a new friendship and gestures for a groom back. <laughs> Susie's baby wants to cement the bond, the bonobo way. A game of tag. And Susie joins in. No bonobo is too old or important to play. is finally beginning to feel at home. She has a friend in Susie. And Camillo's looking over. Two things to smile about. But to be truly accepted, she must impress Martha. Zoe still has a way to go. As the weeks pass, Zoe settles into the group. They have the run of the forest, traveling miles across their territory.
from the high canopy. And into the open grasslands. Every day, Zoe makes more female friends. And with each friendship, her status grows. Camillo can't keep his eyes off her. Even Martha is starting to take note. Today they've come to the lily ponds. Lilies are rich in minerals, but hard to get at if you don't like to get wet. Susie's baby watches how it's done. But it's easier to steal from mom. Zoe's braver than most. She's become experienced, independent. And these days, Camillo is never far from her side. Zoe holds all the cards here. She won't start a family just yet. Not until she's sure her place in the group is secure. Martha on the bank above is who Zoe really needs to impress. And she might finally get her chance. Back in the forest. Sounds from the canopy draw all eyes up. Colobus monkeys have entered their territory. For a long time, bonobos were thought to be vegetarian. But when the opportunity presents itself, they'll choose fresh meat. Camillo leads the hunt, moving silently. Zoe watches and waits. Normally, she'd go with the group. Instead, she climbs up alone. A risky strategy.
Zoe attracts the attention of two colorless males, each nearly as large as her. This could be a big mistake. But she's not afraid. The opposite. Zoe taunts them. Luring them to her and away from their young. A distraction that gives the bonobos the advantage. Now the young colobus are easy prey. Zoe took a risk, and it paid off. They caught two colobus. Meat is a luxury, and Zoe knows she's earned her share. She's confident enough to sit down with Martha. The Alpha gives to those that played a part in the hunt. Zoe gets her first taste of meat with the new group. And from Martha's hand, it's especially good. And later that day, Zoe and Camilla find themselves alone together. With Martha as chaperone, <laughs> Zoe will mate with many males in her life, but Camillo's been first choice from day one. Nothing happens without Martha knowing about it. She makes sure the pair aren't interrupted. Eight months pass. Once again, Zoe's separated from the others. But this time, she's not alone. She's given birth. Tiny baby girl. Just a few days old.
Susie and her baby are nearby. She and other close friends wait to meet the new arrival. There is no danger in introducing such a little one to the group. This close circle of female friends will support mom and the baby as she grows. Zoe's position here is finally secure. As her daughter now begins her own journey, She will play. She will make friendships vital to her survival. Then one day, she too will leave all this behind.